I'm going to talk about the Indian Bear exhibit. Oh, yes, we do need to raise the money. Okay, this exhibit won top honors, and I want to get this straight from the Association of Zoos and Aquariums for its educational programming and its exhibit. By the way, you guys have been talking about those auction items. There's actually a bear training auction item that I know is going for a pretty big number, but I'll tell you what, you get to hold the stick and you also get to give the treats out to train the bear. I mean, that's pretty cool. So I would go check that out on the silent auction uh, website. I know we're streaming that for sure, but while the zoo does work to help the endangered animals, it also helps bears like the ones you see, or you don't see, but they're behind me sleeping right now that aren't endangered, continue to thrive. Take a look. Indian bears are under what's called a species survival plan or an SSP, um, which is basically a combination of eHarmony and Ancestry.com. Um, so they look at all the genetics, they look at the pedigrees um, to kind of match up um, the best combos of bears so that we have the most genetically healthy population. Nashville Zoo carnivore keeper Sloan Campbell says Indian bears are not endangered yet, but they are on their way due to habitat loss and poaching. Well, having a species survival plan and having a good healthy population in zoos not only here in America, but across the world, um, is really important to keep these guys um, living and thriving and not going fully extinct. Luca and Muneri, also known as Muni, live together in the Expedition Peru, trek of the Indian bear exhibit. Indian bears, when they're, they're usually pretty solitary and um, they spend a lot of the year separate. They will come together to eat um, occasionally in the wild. Campbell says Indian bears in captivity start breeding around eight years old. And the good news here, Luca the female just turned eight. When they come together for breeding, um, they're doing a lot of vocalizations. Um, so you might not hear them as much here with the waterfalls and everything, um, but Muniri does a, a trilling noise. It almost kind of sounds like Chewbacca calling a little bit, and Luca will do the same thing back to him. And it's really when Luca starts calling to him that we know that um, she's starting to cycle and is going to be a little more receptive to him. Um, he loves her all the time, no matter what. Um, so it's really about when she's ready to hang out with him. The keepers have been preparing Luca for the last few years. She does things like voluntary ultrasounds so we can just again through like a fence or anything like that just use a probe to be able to check her out for any babies. Campbell says Andean bears don't have a typical gestation period. Instead, they undergo delayed implantation. Once they have a fertilized egg, um, Luca can hold on to that, um, not consciously, it's just something that happens. Um, and not actually implant it into the uterine wall and start the full gestation process until she feels that um, the weather will be better, that the food supplies will be ready. Um, so they could be breeding in the summer and not actually give birth until maybe um, the late winter, um, maybe early spring. Another part of Campbell's job includes providing new enrichments for the bears every day. Foraging is a type of enrichment. Um, and enrichment is anything that we can give the bears or really any of our animals here at the zoo that encourages, encourages them to do natural behaviors. Um, so that maybe that's spending more time looking for their food, which would be foraging. Um, maybe it's destroying things like they would in the wild. Um, sometimes we give them cardboard boxes. Um, our cats love whole sweet potatoes to just shred and turn into confetti. And there's more than meets the eye on this exhibit. The exhibit itself is built with special foraging hidey holes. Um, so there's PVC pipes in that giant big tree out there. Um, so we can actually reach in and put those in there. Um, but there's a lot of different ways we can do that just to encourage them to spend more time eating to mimic what they would be doing in the wild. She adds the keepers also like to mix up the daily training. And while they are used to people, they always have a barrier between them. They are born and raised in zoos, but they still have all their teeth and claws, um, which are very large. And we don't want to put them or us in a situation that could get out of hand um, or cause anyone any harm. But everything's done through a fence. There's either a door or a wall in between us at all times. The next time you visit this AZA award-winning exhibit, Campbell has a little insight on their behaviors. Luca in particular loves to come see what people are doing. She likes to get in the pool when people are down there and splash around and put on a big show. Um, she likes to get up in the tree and make a big nest. Mooney is an absolute ham and will get down front and just kind of nap on the logs and sleep. He likes to sleep a lot of the time. You can support the Andean bears in the wild with the zoo's Adopt an Animal Package. You get a certificate and a chance to meet Luca and Mooney up close.